What is up, nerds? Welcome back. My name is Nathan Wild. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of astrophotography. This is a subset of photography that I'm personally obsessed with. It's one of my favorite things to shoot. It's kind of overwhelming for beginners, and I get a lot of questions from people about how to get started in astrophotography. So I wanted to walk you through my thought process, some of my favorite gear, some of my tips and tricks, and then most of all, my techniques for actually going out and capturing a photo of the night sky. We are out here. I drove out into the desert of Utah to find the darkest sky I could. I figured that we'll actually just take some photos together tonight and you can see my technique and how I approach it. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing, the most obvious thing, but the most important thing is that you need to find a dark sky. And it's actually easier said than done. You don't have to drive around and guess if you're far enough from a city. You can actually go online and find maps. There's a hundred websites that will actually show you dark sky maps. If you type dark sky map into Google, you'll find 10 of them that do an excellent job. I'll link a couple of my favorite ones in the description below, but you're just gonna wanna try and get as far from city lights as possible as a general rule. I'm out here in what's called a Bortle class two sky tonight, which is very dark. It ranges from one up to, I believe about nine, and nine would be like Manhattan, right? That's, you're not seeing stars in a Bortle class nine. A one is like zero light pollution. It's gonna be beautiful. So a two is good, I'm out here. Something important to keep in mind, if you're in the Northern hemisphere, the Milky Way will always be in the Southern part of the sky. And it's gonna move a little bit from the Southeast to the Southwest, depending on the night, time of night and the time of year. But in general, it's gonna be looking to the South. So if you can't get too far from city lights, you're gonna to wanna to try and keep those city lights to the North of you. If you are on the north side of a town, it will be to the south and it will uh, impact your ability to see the Milky Way and it will unfortunately decrease the quality of your photos. And then once you find a nice dark sky, of course there is always the question of gear. The cool thing is that gear doesn't matter a ton, but there are some gear choices you can make that will help make your life a little bit easier and improve the quality of your shots. So first things first, you need a tripod. You don't have to spend $500 on an amazing tripod, but you need just a good sturdy tripod that can hold your camera up. I would recommend not skimping and getting the cheapest like $25 tripod you can find off Amazon because it'll be pretty shaky and you're gonna get some like wobbly weird looking shots, but any like decent tripod that you know a photographer would use will be fine. Next thing, you're gonna want a camera that has pretty good ISO performance. I'm a Sony shooter, so any of the full frame cameras, the A7S III, um, you know, the A7 IV, A7R5, A1, any of those are gonna be great. You can do a crop sensor camera like the A6700 if you want. Those are all gonna be fine. I, I really wouldn't stress too much about your camera. The lens is really where you're gonna make it happen with astrophotography. So the wider aperture, the better. So the lower F number. I'm filming right now on a 35 millimeter F 1.4. So the 1.4 after the F means it's a very wide aperture. Um, a lot of standard lenses will be F 2.8 and that's great, but the lower F number you can get is a wider aperture and it lets more light in and that's going to just overall make for better looking images. Um, you also heard me just now say 35 millimeter F 1.8. So 35 millimeters is your focal length. I again, kind of tend to prefer wider, so a lower number. I'm going to be photographing tonight on either my 14 millimeter f1.8 or my 20 millimeter f1.8. But in general, you're going to want a lens that's both wide and wide. The widest fo focal length you can get and the widest aperture you can get. So good tripod, decent camera, and a wide lens, and you're set up ready to go. It's uh, about 15, 20 minutes after sunset right now, so it's definitely not dark enough, but we should start to see stars here in the next 15, 20 minutes or so, and then we're gonna start taking some shots. Okay, so it is now officially nighttime. It is very dark out here. Um, I'm going to walk through these settings now, but I would like to point out that the easiest way to do this for a beginner, and of course this is uh, you know, intro to astrophotography, so I assume if you're watching this, that would be you. Change these settings at home with the lights on because it's very difficult to fumble around in the dark with a camera you might be unfamiliar with. So I like to change all these settings at home usually. So when I get out in the field, 
I'm just ready to go. But for the purposes of this, I'm gonna show you exactly how I set my camera up for astrophotography, and then we're gonna take some photos. So first things first, let's talk about shutter speed. You want to find a shutter speed that's long enough that you get enough light in there to, to, to get a proper exposure, but not so long that you see motion in the stars, because the stars are, from our perspective, moving across the sky. If your shutter speed is too long, you're actually gonna see trails in the stars as they move, and that doesn't look great. So there's an old traditional rule in astrophotography called the 500 rule, where you divide, you take 500 divided by your focal length, and that will be your shutter speed. With modern digital cameras, that doesn't necessarily hold true as much. So for me on a camera with say 50 megapixel sensor, I just generally try to stay around a 10 to 13 second exposure. Somewhere in there is going to be good for you. I would just start in that neighborhood. And there's no shame in taking a photo and zooming in on it afterwards to see if your shutter speed is the right length. If you see motion in the stars, go a little bit shorter. If you don't see any motion and your shot is a little bit underexposed, try a shot that's a little bit longer. The only way to really get better at this is to take a couple shots and practice and learn. So earlier I mentioned that you want a lens with the widest aperture possible. Now's a good time to do that. I set mine to f1.8. Again, I'm on the Sony 20 millimeter f1.8. So my aperture is all the way open. I have my shutter speed set to 13 seconds. And then I'm gonna set my ISO to 3200. That for me tends to be a really good exposure for astrophotography on this camera and lens. Your mileage may vary, but you will in general want your ISO around 3200 to 4000 if you're using an f1.8 lens. If you're using an f2.8 lens, you might need to go a little bit higher to around, let's say 5000. Don't push it too high if you're shooting at ISO 12800. You're going to start to notice a lot of noise in your images and it's not going to be quite as good as you want. Another thing to pay attention to is your white balance. Cameras with auto white balance tend to not do a great job with the Milky Way and it's gonna shoot it pretty warm, which to me doesn't look good. Now this is a stylistic choice. This is a little bit of artistic interpretation. I like to shoot with my white balance manually set to around 4,000 Kelvin. And I think that looks really nice. You get this really nice kind of almost bluish, but not quite like a clean white Milky Way. To me, that captures the colors really naturally. If you like it a little bit warmer, I think that's okay, but my personal preference is to be around 4,000 Kelvin. You're also gonna to wanna to set the two second delay on your camera. So when you push the shutter button, even if you have a good tripod, it will kind of wiggle around a little bit and you're gonna get that motion blur in your images. So I set a two second delay, so I push the shutter and then my hand is completely off the camera. It has two seconds to stop moving before it takes the image. I also would recommend shooting in RAW. Um, editing is definitely a little bit daunting, but the JPEG version of this is not gonna look as good as it could. And you know, if you're a beginning astrophotographer, there's no time like the present to learn how to edit. And shooting in RAW will give you the most editing latitude possible, and it will make the best looking images in the final stages. So I would recommend shooting in RAW you're gonna to have to put it into Lightroom to do a little bit of adjustments, but I promise you it will be worth the effort. Now the hardest part and probably the most daunting part for all astrophotographers is focusing. So let's bring this camera in a little bit here. I'm going to manually focus on a star. All right, so my lens is set to manual focus. Your camera is very likely not going to be able to autofocus on the stars. But the cool news is on Sony cameras and uh, Canon and Nikon do this as well, when you turn the focus wheel, you can see that it zooms in on the screen. So I'm gonna find a star here. I like that one right there. And now you can see my thumb over here on this wheel. If you push the center button, it actually zooms in again. So you get really tight on this star. And basically the way to manually focus is to turn your, your focus wheel on your uh, lens. And you'll see that the star gets big and then it gets really small and then it starts to get bigger again as you go past it. So the, unfortunately, infinity focus now no longer means infinity on modern cameras. So that won't be accurate. On this lens, it's gonna be somewhere around, you know, five meters or so. You can see there's a little uh, distance measure here. It's kind of irrelevant what that number says, to be honest with you. But I'm gonna just basically, I go till it's a big star and then I just try to get it as small as possible. So I'll end up going past it and just dialing it in until I think it looks as small as possible. Now I'm using my back screen for this because that's 
just the easiest way for me to film this, but in real life, I use the EVF, the electronic viewfinder for most of this because it's higher resolution and it's a better image than this back screen. So you will find that this is a lot easier to use for manual focusing. But again, that's pretty much it. Oh, cool, we got a satellite going through the frame. That's awesome. Um, that's pretty much it though. You just wanna make the star bigger and then it'll get smaller and then bigger again. And you just find that middle ground where it's absolutely as small as it can possibly be. And then there's nothing wrong with taking a test shot and then looking back at that test shot and then just zoom way in as far as you can to see if you got the focus. For me, that looks pretty darn good. The stars are more or less uh, squares. And so that means that I'm, I'm resolving basically a single pixel in diameter. That's as focused as it can get. So I feel good. So now that my camera is focused, I can move it around and I can recompose and I can get the shot that I want. Okay, so we've got our lens focused. We have um, everything set. I zoomed back in on it to make sure everything was sharp. We're now able to recompose. So I can move my camera around on the tripod to get the composition that I want now. All of my settings are good and the lens is focused, but just don't, don't touch your lens. It will change the focus. If you're using a zoom lens, so this is a prime, it has one focal length. If you're using a zoom lens, like a 16 to 35, if you zoom in or out, it's defocused. So every time you change the zoom, you have to refocus. There's no problem, just keep that in mind that if you change your zoom, you're gonna have to refocus. On a prime lens, once you get that focus set, just don't touch it for the rest of the night and you're good to go. Uh, I've got all of my settings locked in. My camera is focused. I'm gonna take some shots, let's get this done. Now it's going to be very difficult to compose your shot in the dark because your back screen on your camera is not really going to let you see what it's pointed at. So you're gonna have to kind of fire, metaphorically and literally, fire in the dark. Take a couple shots, see what looks good, and don't be afraid to take a shot, recompose, take another one. Right now my back screen looks basically black, but I'm going to take a shot. I have 13 second exposure, f1.8, ISO 3200. I push the button, I'm gonna let it take a shot, and then when it's done, you're gonna see it's just an incredible amount of light and data that's gathered by your camera, and the result is truly stunning. Okay, the exposure is done. Let's take a look at it. Oh yeah, that is incredible. And then now I zoom in, just like I said, make sure that the stars are sharp. Make sure that my exposure length looks good. Okay, yeah, that looks really cool. And there you see it. Astrophotography is not that daunting. You can see we changed just a couple settings on the camera. Took us just a minute or two to get set up out here. And I'm firing off Milky Way shots, no big deal. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for you. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.